Hello and welcome! My name is Thomas DeWild and together with Denis Grabash, Tommy Kalava, Alexandra Kapustina, Gennady Obratsov and Farid Rakhmatulin, we are Blue Carbon. Over the past four days we've been working hard together on a spatial representation of shipping emissions. Without further ado, let's dive right in, shall we? When first arriving on the platform, we're presented with a global view of shipping emissions. In the top left-hand side corner, we have those emissions broken down further. And when we highlight specific tiles, in the top right-hand side corner, respective emission data is displayed there. Now at this level of zoom, we can see that there are some interesting areas around the world with high emissions, but what if we're interested in something more specific? Well, we can zoom in, press refresh, and now these tiles have been broken down into their granular versions, allowing us to pinpoint where the emissions are, as well as identify shipping lanes and busy ports. Now, as a researcher, you might be interested in the interaction between emissions, and more specifically, you might be recording local emissions from biogenic or land sources and wanting to subtract the global shipping emission data, the background noise generated by shipping. So if we take the Azores as an example and we go there on the map, we can actually upload a GeoJSON file allowing us to draw a polygon or a certain shape around this area, allowing us to quickly identify tiles that intersect with this area in order for us to then subtract this global shipping emission data from whatever local recordings we might be making. Additionally, we've also added the exclusive economic zones. And if we were to, for instance, take the Italian one, it will automatically take us to that location on the map, as well as generate the granular tiles of emission data. Now, Dennis, you're an information architect at Wertla and you use those skills in this project also. Can you tell us a little bit more about how data flows in Project Blue Carbon? Yes, uh, thank you, Thomas. So, um, of course, the AIS data that was given and it's well understood how powerful and valuable that is. And uh, like many other teams, uh, we then uh, try to combine it with other data. And our main other data source there was the vessel CO2 emissions that are collected by the European Union by this EMSA project. And uh, during the course of the hackathon, uh, we then also had the need to display uh, exclusive economic zones. And uh, there, uh, I actually discovered marine regions during the hackathon and uh, we were using their converted polygons to, to display um, those areas. And um, besides that, what goes into the platform, it's uh, for me equally important what comes out. And uh, there I see two user groups. So we have the data scientists uh, they look at the map and say nice, but uh, basically what they want to have is, is the raw data to, to um, get started with that. But then everyone else, uh, I think they benefit much more from a visual representation and everyone can then go to their home region and zoom in and find out what have been the CO2 emissions there. So this was the high level um, idea. And uh, what I found particularly uh, fun and interesting after we got it working uh, was uh, the, the powerful SQL environment. Uh, I'm a big fan of slightly more complex SQL statements. You can see uh, this uh, lag function there and uh, the geographical distance on a, on a sphere. And uh, with this um, statement, which runs um, around 40 minutes, we're able to aggregate one day of uh, AIS data and uh, break it down into tiles, like a million tiles covering the entire Earth. And you see five of these tiles there at the right side. That's actually uh, the area between Helsinki and Finland and uh, Tallinn and Estonia and the ferry going back and forth. And basically what this aggregation gives us is uh, then the information, where has uh, a vessel been, what was the average speed, how many positions were there, and uh, what was the distance covered in each of these tiles. And uh, that was then the input for the machine learning model. And um, yeah, that was um, the, the fun part of it. Really interesting. And that was on the Spark platform, right? Now, what exactly, about the future? Yeah. If you had more resources or time, where would you take this? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. So 
for me, uh, I would I would automate things more so that uh, basically every morning um, the uh, after midnight the uh, yesterday's data would be aggregated and would be made available, and it would appear on the map. And then of course I would also hope that this map uh, finds a larger audience, and uh, eventually people could just go there and and check and be aware of what are the emissions around them. Yes. Thank you, Dennis. Thanks. Now, when we're talking data, we're also talking data quality. And Alexandra did a lot of work in validating our data and making sure that any outliers were removed and that what we we're trying to predict from the data made a lot of sense. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, Alexandra? First of all, I was working on emission estimation approach and uh, we wanted to have an up-to-date methodology and we went to mostly to IMO greenhouses gases study and uh, figured out there are bottom-up and top-down uh, approaches. As we have uh, data about particular ships, AIS data, we went to bottom-up approach and uh, looked at the um, ways to allocate emissions on international and domestic. We use uh, vessel-based and voyage-based approach and we introduce our special-based approach, uh, the distribution of emission on map. Uh, we were interested in uh, validation issue of uh, comparing methods and uh, uh, dealing with uh, accuracy with missing data. And we developed a bottom-up model based on AIS, ship characteristics and some average dependencies for missing values. Mm. We have a ML model for estimating emissions, machine learning model. Tommy will focus on it more. And uh, I was focused mostly on uh, validating this model with uh, bottom-up methodology. And uh, we also on uh, some future investigation in combination of uh, machine learning model and uh, uh, formulas. <coughs> My second issue was uh, investigating in some distribution of emission on some local area, uh, like Rotterdam. We um, spot uh, some, we tried to spot some places of high emission on map. As uh, on the left picture, it's uh, CO2 distribution on map on map with this, in this area, and uh, on the left picture, we tried to. Uh, figure out the efficiency of carbon distribution and uh, plotted uh, CO2 per uh, distance ships uh, go in this area. And uh, we tried to compare it and to uh, get some interesting uh, findings here to uh, make <coughs> uh, to find some inefficiency uh, places, maybe due to physical reasons or some other reasons. and. Uh, to investigate it. Also, we tried to compare uh, the sources of emission in this area, like inland ships and the sea going ships, and uh, it occurs uh, it's nearly even uh, parts of uh, in, in total emission here. Uh, so, it's a use case of investigating local areas. Really interesting. Now, if you had more time and resources, what would the future look like? I think the most important uh, usage of our instrument is uh, trying to find out some spots uh, with inefficient fuel uh, usage and uh, try to um, investigate with spots uh, for maybe uh, making some policies or some traffic optimization in that place. But at first we should find them out and uh, the special distribution of emission is quite an important thing here. And uh, the other usage of our um, mapping of our distribution could be uh, some local cases as, as here we um, try to do it and uh, like port areas on or high traffic areas and uh, we could try to figure uh, what's the main sources of uh, emission are there and uh, like ship types or like uh, uh, this, uh, go into investigating auxiliary engines and boilers uh, emission because mo mostly in they are averaged on all ship tracks uh, but uh, really they occurs mostly in uh, maneuvering uh, 
support zones and uh, all this emission uh, influence on local life. Now, Tommy, you were the machine learning engineer for this project. Can you tell us a little bit more about the machine learning model and how that all interacted with each other? All right. So in the beginning, we had a quite clear goal to have a spatial representation of emissions on a map. So I took as my responsibility to think about the overall picture, how to achieve this goal technically and what different steps we would need there. So we needed to have a way to estimate the emissions with AIS data. And since emissions depend on ships characteristics, we need to look at each ship individually when making the estimations. And on the other hand, we want to have the spatial representation. So we needed to check each vessel's movement in each of these small areas. And then we needed to think how these emissions should be calculated. And there are some existing formulas to calculate the emissions, but that would need some extra knowledge about each vessel that we didn't have at hand. So we found this public data set of yearly emissions of some vessels, namely this EU MRV data set, which work together with aggregated AIS data as training data for, for a machine learning, learning model. So we implemented such a model then. And then we had a way to estimate how much each vessel produces emissions in each area and time frame. So we would get this really detailed map of emissions. And so a lot of my time went to these data and machine learning pipelines, storage of intermediate results and thinking how to deliver the results to the user interface so that it's fast and smooth to use. So that was my role in the project. Really interesting. Now, what about the future? If you had more resources or time, where would you like to take this? Well, for future, uh, I think uh, there's a lot of potential to make more accurate estimations by incorporating more data sets and tweaking the model or combining different approaches in emission calculations. And on the other hand, they're also making these estimations publicly available to people would be really valuable. And also possibility to look at the results from different angles, for example, per vessel type would be interesting future development. Agreed. Thank you very much, Tommy. Thanks. Now we've seen from Dennis the data flows, and we've talked to Alexandra and Tommy about the data validation and the machine learning model. But Farid, can you tell us what you've been working on? Hello, Thomas. I work mostly on the front end part of our solution, as well as participating in the back end. I would like now to demonstrate the map and the functionality of it. Uh, on the initial load, you could see the whole world with low resolution and uh, total CO2 uh, emission. Uh, the the main uh, part of the, this page is you could see this in the map, uh, which is uh, which was drawn thankful to uh, layer flat uh, JavaScript framework, and uh, the base map was used with uh, was created uh, with map box. Uh, also, uh, uh, they thank you to uh, use and to help with uh, CSS uh, framework, uh, which is uh, Boomer. Uh, so now you could see the date pickers, which allows you to filter the data uh, by date. And also you could see the uh, this selection, which allows you to select data uh, by uh, economical, uh, exclusive economical zones. Uh, so let's go to Bagamas, I guess, and so after you pick this zone, map will fly to it and uh, refresh uh, the tiles. Uh, so on the specific zone, also you could uh, maybe zoom in and some, some part of it, and also click refresh button to uh, make uh, tiles smaller. 
and to have more accurate uh, points on the map to see the emission. So what does the future look like? Uh, I, I, I would like to say that uh, increasing productivity is always a good point to increase our front-end application. Uh, also, uh, our work was produced um, much more data, but much more data than uh, our current front-end could display. So I'd like it will be cool to add some additional weather layer and uh, some filter uh, by, for, for example, ship type. Thank you, Farid. Now, last but not least, we have Ginaji. And Ginaji, you've been working hard behind the scenes, helping everyone, but also doing your own investigation. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. Uh, first, I uh, helped Alexandra calculate uh, the other emissions, sulfur and nitrogen uh, oxides. Why are these emissions selected? Uh, NOx has a high biological activity and leads to a decrease in respiratory function. Uh, SO2 affects uh, the rate of photosynthesis, especially in conifers. Uh, to improve the model, I found that on the concentration of nitrogen and uh, sulfur oxides, they are freely available on Copernicus site. An area near Rotterdam was selected for uh, analysis. I overlaid the average wind speed. Uh, to check that the distribution of nitrogen oxide concentration was not influenced by land sources. Uh, we tried uh, analytical model before uh, ML model and uh, then we merged them. I visualized the progress of the model. Alexandra improved uh, this near the port area. So yeah, that's all. Interesting. Now, what about the future? What if you had more time and resources? What would you do? Uh, uh, with more resources, we could we could do a diffusion analysis, also calculate periodical nitrates and aerosols, and maybe overlay air quality data in coastal cities, especially in emission control areas. Yeah. Really good. Thank you so much, Gennady. Thank you too. This now brings us to a close. When we started brainstorming as Team Blue Carbon, we wanted to create something enduring, something that would support the sustainable development goals, specifically those to do with marine life and climate change. We hope that our work has shown the merits of calculating shipping emissions and distributing them spatially. We hope that it would support researchers around the world that have a need for this data that will further their research. We think this is just one small step and we do hope that this foundation can be taken further with additional resources and time as mentioned by everyone in the team. On behalf of everyone at Blue Carbon, thank you.